Hello, this is Chris from Mirkwood Runner, and today I thought I'd bring you guys a quick tutorial about how to use Octagon to play Lord of the Rings the card game. So I've seen a lot of people ask, you know, how to get into this and how to do it. And I have to say from personal experience that this is probably one of my favorite ways to play the game, uh, just from the simple fact that it is fairly simple to set up and do. So I'm going to go through the different steps to install Octagon, to load Lord of the Rings onto it, and then finally to play the game. You know, all the little tricks that you need to know so that you can play the game to its maximum. So first things first, you need to get Octagon, the software. <clears throat> so what we have here is Octagon.net, and on it you see the various um, links that you can go to, and you want to click on Download. So on here, there's two different versions of it. You got your live and your test version, unless you're actually trying to develop um, your own um, sets or um, you know your own separate games on Octagon. You really don't need to worry about the test version. Just click on the download version, on um, download the live version, and um, you know it'll it'll download to your computer. Uh, after it's downloaded, you install it. And the next thing you're going to want to do is register an account. So here, um, this is again on the Octagon website, and here they'll just ask for you to put in a username, password, and a valid email address. Uh, it's important that you do this because they're going to send you a confirmation email, which you'll have to do before you can log into Octagon. So once you've done this, you've got Octagon installed, um, you can log in. So here is Octagon. Here, right here, this is your sign-in screen. This is what you'll see when you first um, come in. You'll just put in your username, your password, and it will bring you to the community chat. This is just a chat room that you can use. Um, some people will use it to log into and you know look for games. Um, <clears throat> so this, you'll notice that there's a lot of different people talking about a lot of different games. Um, Octagon is not just for Lord of the Rings, but it can be used for other living card games as well as Magic the Gathering and other various card games. So now that you've got the software, how do you play the game? So what you're going to want to do is go over to Games Manager and add a game feed. So in here, you're going to need to get the name of your feed, whatever you want it to be, the URL, the username, and the password if applicable. So for this one, what you're going to want to do is go over to this other website. Um, I'll have all these websites in the description of the video, but um, just so you know, this is kind of where you need to go. And here is the URL you need. So, you know, it suggests to put it as Octagon Game Directory and, you know, this www.myget.org, blah, blah, blah. So once you have that in there, you will have what looks like the screen that's about to pop up whenever it decides to. There, that's still not it. There we go. Okay. So in this game feed, there's a bunch of various games and you can install whichever ones you want to play on Octagon. Now I do want to give a little disclaimer at this point that um, this game is not, this uh, system is not intended to be a way to pirate games, uh, nor is my tutorial a uh, intended to teach you how to pirate any of these games. I own the games that I use uh, Octagon to play, so I suggest that you do the same thing. Support the developers who make these games, and um, yeah, and just you know, don't don't pirate. <laughs> Okay, so once you've once you've uh, gotten this directory down and you've chosen what you want to do, um, anything that's already installed obviously would look like this, but this is probably what's going to look like when you first do. Click on it and there will be an install button. You click that button and uh, it'll take a little bit of time, but then it'll install the game on your computer. So that is all well and good, but the next thing is you need the actual images of the cards. Um, if you are a subscriber to Octagon, you have the ability to drag and drop image files onto the cards so that you get them. But um, if you don't want to 
um, pay for that or you know you just want the easiest one they do have uh, select cards available in what are called OHC files and that is what this page is here again I'll have all the links in the description of the video <clears throat> so here they will show all the video or all the OHC files that they have available um, you will notice that some of the later uh, expansions will have a date next to them um, in respect to the work that Fantasy Flight does on the game uh, they wait a six months prior to um, or six months after the uh, pack had been released in order to put the files out there um, again I stress that you know please purchase the items before you download this but you know any files that you have here are available so you have you know all the the core set and then the cycles their deluxe expansions SOG expansions uh, print on demand quests that you can get directly from from Fantasy Flight themselves uh, nightmare versions there are also some fan content available here as well as some alternate art cards so you basically just click them download them wherever you want on your computer and then we will go back to octagon and we will add image packs so in this case I just took the print on demand file and I'm going to save that so it's just that easy it's been installed onto my computer and now I'm ready to go so what I want to do first is I want to create a deck so I clicked on the deck editor uh, button and now I can create a deck for any com any game that I have got loaded onto my computer so let's choose Lord of the Rings and here it will have a list of all the cards that are available to work with now this has both player cards and encounter cards so you have access to both of those so what I like to do first is um, I like to filter based on what type of card I'm gonna do so let's start with putting out some heroes so um, let's put out who do we want to put out let's let's we don't want Bilbo so let's put let's put Balin in the deck and let's put sure let's put Elro here and let's put uh, let's put his brother in there too so I can click on the name to sort everything by that so there we go so now we got three heroes which is our limit on characters and then we can add some allies so I like to put in the type ally and then it shows you all of the allies so we can add some so let's find somebody that's within our deck so we'll click on allies and click Defender of the of Ramas. We'll add three of him. We will add a Dunedain Watcher, because why not? And so on and so forth. So I think you can get the idea of how this works. Um, you know, you keep on adding until you've done it, and then you can save your decks up here. Save it wherever you wish. I'm not going to keep this deck. I have lots of decks that are going to. So let's get into playing a game now. So first off you go to this spot so by default it'll show played you can hide uninstalled games or you can show all of them so these are all of the games that are awaiting people you can also click here and you can spectate on games so these are games that are currently being played you could double click on any of these and jump into them um, these are all the games currently being played on octagon right now but for now let's just start our own game so you'll have your username that you have, whatever you want the name to be. So let's say this is tutorial game. You can add a password if you want, and then you specify what game. So we are doing Lord of the Rings. So let's click start. And give it a minute. It's going to start the game. And here we are. Okay so this is the starting screen so if you wanted to play with other people um, after a minute they would see your game in the uh, play section and you can either allow spectators or not and then 
you want to make sure there's a one-sided table and you could wait for people to join if you wanted to or let's just play solo so we're going to click start all right so here we are in the screen i should mention i do have a custom background uh, i might cover that in a later video how to change this background it's a fairly simple thing but um the default background is basically a map of middle earth which is still a nice one but you know I like to just do something a little different to differentiate myself. So anyway, so here we are um, in the game. You have your section for your hand down here as well as a spot for your deck and your discard pile. This uh, in the bottom left is a spot which has all of your, basically everything, all the actions that have happened in the game. It's basically a history here. Uh, up here, this large rectangle is your staging area. Uh, active location is this box here, and then your quest cards go here. So let's open up a game. So start out by, I'll find one of my decks that I want to put out here. Uh, let's put out this one. I think this is the one I used in the nightmare runs that I did before. Okay. So um, you'll see that basically this is a setup uh, cards got put out on here. So I'll just set them to the side. But my starting hand is automatically put out here. My starting threat is put out right here. My heroes are already put on the table and I am ready to go, except I don't have a quest to go against. So let's just pull out a quest. And because it's just an example, we'll start with the basic quest, uh, Passage Through Mirkwood. So you can see here that the quest is automatically added to the quest deck section. Um, this is only the first card. The rest of the cards are listed down here under the global tab right here along with the encounter deck. Uh, if there's any special decks, there's also spaces for them over here. And it also takes care of the setup for you. So if you look, read here, it says place one copy of Forest Spider and one copy of Fo Old Forest Road into the staging area, then shuffle a deck. So that's what they did. And you can even see that in the little text box. So it added... Forest Spider and Old Forest Road to the staging area, and then it shuffled the deck. All right, so setup is done. I can just double click or I can press Control F to flip the, uh, the quest card over to the other side. And now down here, I've got my opening hand. And if I want to, I can play, I can take this hand or I can mulligan. So we'll just do that. So you can always right click to find all your options. So for mulligan, I could just click here or I can press control M and it'll want confirmation. It'll say yes. All right. I'm not sure if that was a good mulligan, but this is a tutorial, so we'll go with it. All right. So, so we've got my starting hand got my cards, but now it's time to start a new round. So the first thing you want to do is you want to press control N to start a new round. So it starts a new hand. It adds resources to everybody. It drew me a card. If you're playing in multiplayer, there's also a uh, starting player token that will show up and it will also show um, what round you're in. But for the, the solo game, it ignores that and just has it in there. So you see, we are at turn one. And we get to do so to play the game, you have these various cards in there. So, you, what you can do is you can just play the cards that you want. So, you can either drag them out of your hand to play them, or you can double click them. So, let's say I wanted to play this Calabrian Stone, just double click it, and boom, it's on the field. Now, I still have to pay the resources. So, I have these resources here to remove a, res a resource token. You just press F4, so F4 on Aragorn. F4 on Halberod, and then I can drag it wherever I want it. So if I wanted to attach it to Aragorn, put it right there, but now it's covering up the card. So to clear that up, I can just press page down and that'll send the card to the back. So now it's attached, it's behind there. And as you probably noticed, I can just highlight over a card to look at it. All right, so I got that card. I'm gonna put out my gather information side quest from the new uh the new expansion and now i am ready to go okay 
So here we go. It's I've done my planning phase and now I am to the quest phase. So now I have to choose how I'm going to quest. I think I will send Aragorn and I will send Glorfindel. Now Glorfindel has the forced effect after he exhausts uh, raise my threat by one. So I'm just double clicking to exhaust them and I have to manually increase my threat by one. All right. And since and this is a new thing for the new expansion, but since I have these two quest cards, I have to choose which one I'm going to go after. <clears throat> I think I'm going to go after my gather information. Now, this target that I just put out there, all I did was I held down shift and clicked. So put it out there, and I can shift click again to remove it. Okay. So I'm up against three versus I have four because I have two willpower here plus another two from my Calabrian Stone, and I got another three from here. So I'm up, I have seven against the three that's already there. So now I'm going to have to add an encounter card for my staging. And you add one per player, so in my case one. To do that automatically, I could just, I could just go here and drag a card up, but instead I'm just going to click Control-E, and it's going to automatically add a card from the, sta from the encounter deck onto the staging area. So I have two, three, five against my seven. So I'm going to make two progress on my quest card. And now questing has been resolved. So now I get to choose my travel phase. And what I will do is I will travel to the old forest road. Um, <clears throat> so the way to make this the active location, you're going to press control A. And there it goes all the way there. And now it has the response. After you travel to Old Forest Road, the first player may choose and ready one character he controls. So I've got I've got a response here. Now responses are optional. You can always choose to do them. You don't have to. Whereas with Glorfindel, I have the force effect. Force effects you always have to do. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the response and I'm going to ready Aragorn. So he's back up readied. And all I did was I double clicked on him and he popped back up. All right, so travel is over. So now we go to the uh, to engagement phase. I have one enemy here, which has a threat of 25 up in that left corner. Now looking at mine, I, start, I have a threat of 28. So I could optionally engage him, but even, even if I don't, he's gonna come down regardless because of his, um, <clears throat> his, uh, his engagement cost. Oh, I should have mentioned um, before, when I put this progress on there, the button to do that is F2. So I can click F2, it shows another one, but I only made two, so I need to remove one. To remove a progress token, it is F5. Just click it and it goes there. So you can do that on any card. Even cards that don't need them. But there we go. All right, so now I've, I'm engaged with one enemy. The Forest Spider has the Forest effect. After a Forest Spider engages a player, it gets plus one attack until the end of the round. So again, here's a Forced effect. Cannot uh, avoid it. A Forced effect always happens. You don't have a choice. So he's going to attack me. And he's normally a two attack, but with his Forced effect, he's a three attack. So now I have to deal him a shadow card. And the way I do that is I just hover over him and I press Control S. And it'll automatically take the top card from the encounter deck and put him on there. If I had multiple enemies, I would have to put them first on the enemies engaged with the first player and do them in threat order. So if there was a enemy with a threat higher than the Forest Spider, he would get that before the other ones. If you ever run out of cards during the uh, sh while adding shadow cards, you just stop. You only reshuffle the deck during the staging phase. So anyways, here I am, I've got I've got three attacks that I have to deal with. I think I'm going to have Halberod defend it. And then to reveal the shadow effect, I just double click. Old Forest Road. So he does not have a shadow effect. You know, look at the Forest Spider itself and you see that there is a bar with a skull in it and then underneath it, it says shadow and some text. That is what a shadow effect looks like. So. If a card, if the shadow card has that effect, then you do it, you resolve it. Otherwise it does nothing. 
basically when it's a shadow effect, you're only looking for that text. The rest of the text does not matter. So had the forced spider been the shadow effect, it would have made me discard an attachment. But as it stands, the forced road has nothing. So I got lucky. He's three attack. I have two defense on Halbarad. So he's going to take one damage. And to put that wound marker on him, all I do is I press F3. If I wanted to get rid of it through maybe some healing, I'd press F6. But as it stands, he's wounded. So now that the attacks are over, I'm going to have Aragorn attack back. So he's got three attack. Four Spider has one defense. So I'm going to double click Aragorn to exhaust him. And he's going to attack for three. One defense, so two damage goes through. So F3, F3, and there's two damage. And now you can see, you know, where there's only the token he down here on Halbrod, because there's two, it shows the wound marker and then the two. All right, so now combat is over, so I get to discard my shadow, shadow card. Um, to do that, I just highlight over it, and I press delete, and it's gone. And the round is over. I don't think there's anything else I can do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control N to start a new round, and here we go. So now I've got a new card, and I've got <clears throat> all my resources for the new round. And as you can see, I went up a threat. So what I think I'll do is I think I will start by putting out a, a Thier Swordsman. So I'll put doop doop, take two off with F4 to put the a Thier Swordsman out. And you see he has a special ability which is passive. It doesn't have an, a forced or a response or um, another one we'd see is action uh, like we have. Oh, I don't think we have any there. Oh, nope. Nope, no. It doesn't look like we have any actions yet. Anyways, um, so his passive ability says each outland character gets plus one. Well, he's got the outland's trait shown here with the bold and the italics. So he's actually a two willpower and would get higher if any more of these guys would come up. So we got him out, and let's add another ally. So I will take one off of Aragorn and one off of Halbrad to put out an Envoy of Pelagir. All right, now she has the response. After Envoy of Pelagir enters play, add one resource to a Gondor or Noble hero. So let's see here. Okay, Glorfindel is Noble, so he could do it. Uh, Halbarad is neither, do, is neither Gondor nor Noble, so he can't have it. And uh, Aragorn is noble, so either Aragorn or Glorfindel could take it. So I think I'm going to add the resource back onto Aragorn. So to add a resource, you just press F1. Boom. All right, so here I am. I've got, I've got more resources. I could spend the resource to, to put out another thing. I think I will save it. Because um, I could also use it for Aragorn's response. In fact, I think I will. So I will exhaust Aragorn to add him to questing. But then after Aragorn commits to a quest, spend one resource from his resource pool to ready him. So I will do that. So F4 to remove it. And then double click him back up. So that's four for him. Um, Halbarad has the, uh, the ability while you're engaged with an enemy... He does not exhaust to commit to the quest. So I get to add him for free. So four, he's free, six. I think I'll skip Glorfindel for now because he's um, he, because of his threat increase. So I'm at six. And then I'll do the Aetherius Swordsman for eight. And I'll leave uh, the Envoy up also. So only one guy is actually exhausted to quest. That's pretty good. So we're at eight uh, willpower, which I can add right down here next to the sun. Just press the 8 there and press enter and now it shows that my willpower is 8. So this is very important for uh, multiplayer when you're working with multiple people. That way everybody can uh, show what they're contributing to the quest. And if I want to here I can show that I've got two threat currently in the staging area. So let's add a card. So control E. We got another location. So this time we got a great forced web. Uh, to travel here. Okay, so here's the travel uh, action. Whereas we had a response here, this is the travel action. So to travel here, you have to follow whatever the text is. And if you cannot uh, satisfy the requirements of travel, then you can't go to that location. 
So it says each player must exhaust one hero he controls to travel here. Okay. So, and then we got this forest. If After you travel to the forest gate, the forest may draw two. All right, but let's resolve quests first. So we had two, two, and three here. So we, do, we did eight willpower versus four threat in the staging area. So that's four total. So um, we'll do three to the active location. Always put progress on the active location first. And I suppose I should have specified, but... Um, I was still going to this gather uh, information quest. So I will put my remaining one progress there. So now it is still uncompleted. I'm uh, completed with the old forest road, however, so I can just discard it with a delete. Boom. And now I go to travel. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel to the forest gate so that I can draw some cards. So I'll press Control A to make it on my active location. And now I get to draw cards. So be, the best way to do that is just double click on your deck. So draw, draw. I got some pretty good guys for that. All right. Um, so no enemies in the staging area. So there's no engagements left. Um, this four spider is only a two now because it is the it is after the round that it was engaged with me. So I think it's a little bit more manageable. So I will put a shadow card there. I will have Halberad defend again. Defending player must choose and discard one attachment he controls. Well, I only have one attachment, so I'm going to have to discard my Calabrian Stone. So I will press delete there. That's unfortunate. And now I have to decide if I want to attack back. I think I'm going to hold off because I can keep using Halberad to quest. So I'll just leave him there. So instead of attacking back, I will just delete this shadow card and I will press control N to start a new round. All right, and good deal. I got my Light of Valinor. So I will press F4 to take one resource off of Glorvindel and I will put him right there. So now he gets to go without exhausting. So next thing, next, next, next. Um, I think I will put out another ally i'll put out the weather hills watchman after weather hills watchman enters play search the top five cards of your deck for a signal card and add it to your hand shuffle the other cards back to your deck so the way that you can do that is if you right click on your deck there's a look at and you can see a top five or top x cards so click on that and it says how many cards do you want to see and i'll say five and there it pulls up the top five cards now, for this card specifically, it says, look for a signal card. So a card with a signal of trade on it. So it looks like the only card we have here is the Dunedain Warning. So I get to add that to my hand, and I'll just drag it and drop it into my hand. So I'll close this up. Now, those cards haven't been shuffled yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on here and just click Shuffle. Boom. All right. So now I have two threat in my staging area. I've got four to get through this, and I need one more to get through this gather information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Halberad quest, because he doesn't have to exhaust, because I'm engaged. Um, three more for Glorfindel, because Light of Al Nor doesn't uh, require him to exhaust. I will do the Aether Swordsman. And uh, I think I'll do the Weather Hills Watchman, too. So that will be two, five, seven, eight, eight again. And let's press control E to add a card. Caught in a web. The player with the highest threat attaches this card to one of his heroes. Well, I'm the only one there, so it has to be me. Counts as a condition. Attached hero does not ready during the refresh phase unless you pay two resources from the hero's pool. Well, that's unfortunate. I think I will put it on Glorfindel since I'm going to be able to still quest with him without exhausting him. That's still unfortunate. I'm I'm not a big fan of that card. But anyways, that's what it is. That treachery card is our card for the round. There's no surge on it, so it doesn't add a new one. So I'm doing six progress against this. So one, two, three, four, and then one, two. And... This card only required four, but I did one extra, which just gets 
um, just goes away. So I have completed this. Now, response. After the start stage is defeated, each player may search his deck for one card and add it to his hand. Then shuffle their deck. All right. So now we get to look at our whole deck and add a card to it. So let's see. What do we want to add? We already have a tree beard in hand. We already have a lot of good stuff. Let's, you know what? I think I want to add Steward of Gondor to my deck. Because I could use those resources. All right, so let's close and shuffle. So you see, instead of having to right click on it and shuffle, I just push the button to close it and shuffle it. All right, so let's get rid of this card. So I'll just press delete. Now, this card, however, if you look in the bottom right corner, it says victory. What that means is that it doesn't go back into your discard pile, it actually goes into a separate section called the victory display. So to get it in there, you press Control V. And so now it shows that it's in the global victory display, which is this section right here. And you also will see that you have a victory point right here, one. All right, so now let's go on to combat. Oh, excuse me, let's, uh, let's uh, go into, into travel first. I guess I will travel to the Great Forest Web to get it out of the way. Each player must exhaust one hero controls to, to travel here, so I will do that. I will exhaust Aragorn here, because I don't want to have to spend the resources to ready Glorfindel. <clears throat> and plus, I think I'll be okay. You know, I don't really need to kill this guy anyways. But anyways, we um, will now go to combat. So, Control s Shadow Card. I will use Hal Halbarad to defend and no shadow effect. So, um, <clears throat> I cannot attack him back. I have one attack here with the Envoy, but he has one defense, so it wouldn't do anything, and I could use Glorfindel, but it's just not worth it. I don't think I'm okay. So, I'll delete this, and I'll press Control n All right, and so I got a Ranger Summon. So that's one of these set-aside cards. I basically can shuffle them into the deck. So I think first thing I will do is I will pay two resources off of my two leadership heroes and I will add a Steward of Gondor. Again, pressing page down to send it to the back. And then I will use its action ability, exhaust it to add two resources to the attached hero's resource pool. So exhaust, one, two. Now what to do with these resources. So I think I will spend one to play Ranger Summon. So I get to add one of these cards, Ranger of the North, to the engage uh, to the encounter card deck. So I will drag it down there. I will shuffle, and that is done. All right. So now, do I want to spend anything else? I think I do. I think I'm going to spend one more resource to give Halvorod a three defense, just to kind of beef him up a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm going to do two for Halvorod in questing. I'm going to do f three more for five, another two for seven, and da, 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 da. also the Envoy this time for eight. So we're going against eight, and this time we have zero willpower in the staging area. Ooh, this is a bad treachery. Okay, when revealed. Deal one damage to each exhausted character. All right, so none of my heroes are exhausted, but my Thier Swordsman and my Envoy are both exhausted. They take one damage each with an F3, and they each have one hit point, so they are both dead. So I will select both of them. Press Delete. Oof, nasty. All right, Weather Hills Watchman, you're coming closer. All right, so that was nasty. And that take, takes away from some of my questing power, but I still have two, and three more is five against nothing in the staging area, so I will make two, oops, put the wrong uh, token on there, two on here, and then one, two, three more on to my quest. All right, so I will delete the Great Forest web, and now I will attack. Well, for, I guess I'll defend first, so I'll first get a shadow card. Hogrod will defend. Defending character must choose and exhaust one character he controls. Two if it's undefended. 
Uh, I haven't had this deal, but um, just in case you're wondering, undefended means that I did not choose a defender. Um, if you do that, when you deal damage, you have to just deal to a hero. You have no choice. So I have to choose to exhaust one character I control. Now, since it says character, that can be an ally or a hero. I will choose my Weatherhills Watchman to exhaust. So now I do two damage versus three defense, no damage. And I think it's time for this guy to die. So I will have Aragorn swing in and deal three damage to him. Minus one is two damage, which is enough to kill him. And I'll delete my shadow card and I'll start again. Anyways, at this point, um, I think I've kind of shown you the gist of how a round goes. Um, there's a few things we didn't show. Surge, which um, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's going to add an extra card. Um, but I think that kind of gives you the idea of how you play. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to include them uh, in the comments below. Uh, and I will see you again shortly for another video. Take care.